Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra to see how accurate all the science and technology in this movie really are. Perfect little soldiers, originally developed to isolate and kill cancer cells, but at Mars Industries, and with the help of a little NATO funding, we discovered how to program them to do almost anything. For example, heat metal. Watch this test of the world's first nanomite warhead. Each of these warheads contains 7 million nano- The nanomites look like little bugs with saws at the end of them, and I'm wondering how difficult it must be to actually build these, because part of the manufacturing process that engineers have to follow is called tooling, and that means very, very specific machines are built to produce these very, very specific products, or in this case, these nanomites. And in order to properly make them, you need these special tools to be very precise to accurately make nano saws, nano legs, nano antenna, and then other machines to actually assemble all these parts together. I do think if these were real, they'd be able to cut through large chunks of metal like that. I doubt it can be done at the speed. One of the downsides to nanotechnology is keeping all these guys together. Individually, they're not a threat, and their mass is going to be negligible. Keeping on a moving target is going to be a huge challenge. Attacking a structure like the Eiffel Tower or a building makes a lot more sense for this type of weapon. To get the most destructive power out of them, you need to really be attacking a stationary object because there's already so many other variables to play with. You want to control as many as possible. Brother. He's probably my favorite character in all of G.I. Joe. Snake Eyes is awesome. In the original origin story, Snake Eyes returned from the Vietnam War to learn his family died in a car accident, which involved the brother of the man who later became Cobra Commander. Devastated, Snake Eyes accepts an offer to study ninja arts with Storm Shadow's family, the Arashikage Clan. When his master is assassinated, the Arashikage Clan goes into a civil war and dissolves after which Snake Eyes returns to America. Snake Eyes was living in the High Sierra Mountains with a pet wolf named Timber when he was recruited to the G.I. Joe team. He's an expert in small arms while also holding 12 black belts in various martial arts disciplines. During one of his first missions for G.I. Joe, Snake Eyes' face was severely disfigured in a helicopter explosion. Since then, he's had extensive plastic surgery to repair the damage, but his vocal cords could not be repaired. Parallel characters of Snake Eyes are Black Noir from The Boys and his rivalry between Storm Shadow can be seen through Shen and Zed from League of Legends. The red symbols on his arm are Bagua trigram symbols for water and fire. The symbol is also used for the Arashikage Ninja Clan, of which Snake Eyes and Storm Shadows are members. His original action figure released in 1982 and was designed to save Hasbro money in the paint application process. His figure was made of black plastic with no paint applied for details, and his head did not require any details because of his mask. This meant there was a much higher profit margin with Snake Eyes and one of the reasons that this character was advertised so often and why he has the most spin-offs of any G.I. Joe character. Now we have 23. What's that? Camouflage suit. He photographs everything behind you and puts it in front of you. This technology is actually not futuristic at all. It can be done very easily on a screen. To put it in a fabric like this means multiple little screens all over the clothing. And the very nature of it means every time you move, somebody will hear all the plastic and the metal moving around and the cameras need to have a constant feed because the, the person wearing this won't be standing still and it would be very fragile and bulky. The biggest obstacle to invisibility technology is actually a lot harder to solve. If you're outside, it will cast a shadow. And in fact, even right now in this scene, if you look at her feet, there is a shadow being cast which cannot be covered up by these cameras or these lenses. If the plan is to go in at night, then nature is actually providing the best invisibility cloak, and all this technology is moot. Storm Shadow's real name is Thomas S. Arashikage. Arashi means storm and Kage means shadow in Japanese. Storm Shadow can trace his family history through 30 generations of assassins. 
He is an 8th degree black belt in several martial arts and is an expert with a longbow, katana, shuriken, and nunchaku. He served in the Vietnam War in the Long Range Renaissance Patrol or LRRP team alongside Snake Eyes. The years of war and hardship brought Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes close together to the point where Storm Shadow invited him to train with the rest of the Arashikage clan as a ninja. Snake Eyes quickly surpassed Storm Shadow and the Hardmaster wanted to make Snake Eyes the next leader of the clan, which brought a rift between him and Storm Shadow. Zartan used Storm Shadow's arrow to kill the Hardmaster, though his original target was Snake Eyes, as he was on a revenge mission from Cobra Commander. Snake Eyes suspected Storm Shadow for this murder and civil war quickly broke out in the Arashikage clan, which led to it being dissolved. Years later, Storm Shadow joined Cobra and quickly ascended the ranks to eventually becoming Cobra Commander's ninja bodyguard. Storm Shadow is one of the few characters from G.I. Joe that's been both a member of Cobra and the G.I. Joe squad. He and Snake Eyes joined forces when they learned Zartan was responsible for the Hardmaster's death. Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes would form the G.I. Joe's official ninja division force where he would train future generations under Arashikage standards. He never gives up. I might be a little too nitpicky here, but I, I want to know what you guys think. If a train hits a car at a 90 degree angle, how would it get airborne? And on top of that, do a front flip? Like, I'm, I'm not above movie magic. It just doesn't, it, it has to be at least 10% accurate. I mean, this is so completely unbelievable. It defies physics in every way. And I, it's, I don't know, this is just completely unrealistic to me. Video from the Akbar Cam is coming online now. Bloody hell. They've built a military base under the polar ice cap. That is a real thing. Drones in the exact shape and sometimes the size of animals already exist today. There's a fish drone that we use for learning about the ocean, but most tech fails underwater under long periods of time, and it's a really unique engineering challenge. The dragonfly drone and studying how their wings move for maybe better airplanes or any sort of airborne technology as well as learning about how these unique insects actually interact and continuing to develop this technology to be the size of a literal dragonfly one day. Things get really crazy when we start making cyborgs out of animals. There are engineers who instead of developing a fully electric drone in the shape of an animal, hijack the nervous system of a biological animal and control them in the same way. This is being done to the scale of insects to larger reptiles like turtles, controlling their movements and putting a camera on them like a GoPro to see their perspective or for other nefarious purposes. Ah, shit. Ah, I can't shake these guys. Duke, I'm out. All right, let's see what we got here. Black rate, eliminator, LAW. Laser artillery weapon. That sounds good. This is where we take that a little bit too far with shaping submarine vessels like manta rays. In nature, rays will use their wings to glide through the water and they can manipulate the shape of them to move in a 3D space. These are moving from a rudder. The wings are not only useless, they're actually preventing the machine from achieving higher speeds. The wings on an airplane are based off of bird wings which help achieve lift and once at cruising altitude, the engine can be turned off so the plane can just glide like a bird would. There's far less resistance in the air than there is in the water, so wings on an airplane make a lot more sense, but these don't. Please keep me informed of your progress, General. I've never seen holograms interacting with other holograms like that before. This is a whole new level of augmented reality. With the projectors they have, creating a virtual 3D image like this guy would be possible. I wonder how it looks on his end. Not likely that great quality. To see him like that, you'd really need specific lenses to enhance that image. I'm really fascinated at how he was able to move his hand over the case and gain information about the nanites. This doesn't exist today and I'm not even sure how it would have practical applications. When we see really advanced technology like this, keep in mind 
Engineers develop products to solve problems. A holographic projection means instead of a Microsoft Teams call or Skype, we can see the other people in the meeting and how they're sitting and make eye contact with them. And this would be very useful for communication. A potential problem here would be how he just walked in unannounced. I mean, unless I miss something, that is a huge privacy concern. And even if you are the CEO, you shouldn't be allowed to do that unless someone lets you in. Untethered access to networks is a huge safety concern. And at the administration level, people given those powers are carefully monitored. <laughs> I've finally taken my place in the long line of McCullens. James McCullen is no more. Now, you are Destro. Destro's full name is James McCullen Destro the 24th, and he comes from a very long lineage of arms dealers selling bullets and bandages to both sides of the war. Destro's key characteristics are his sense of honor, a calm demeanor, and a love of Baroness, Cobra's second in command. His mask is forged from beryllium steel, a tradition dating back to the Wars of the Three Kingdoms, when his ancestor was caught in the act of selling weapons to both sides. Forced to wear a stall mask for his crimes, but he wasn't executed because both sides still needed weapons to win the war. The Destro clan turned it into a symbol of pride passing it down from father to son over 20 generations. He respects the G.I. Joe team for their combat skills, but detests them for wasting the skills to maintain peace. Destro and Cobra Commander despise each other, only maintaining their alliance out of convenience. In a perfect world, Destro would remove Cobra Commander from the equation and rule with Lady Baroness at his side. 